Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you again for joining me on a very important bit of political news related to COVID-19. As usual, I'm trying to keep you up to date on the issues that are occurring around the world. And in this case, this is about the United Kingdom. Here, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of the news about Andrew Bridgend, an MP in the United Kingdom, and why I think what he was talking about needs to be looked at, but probably in a different way than it is at the moment. These are important times, critical times actually, for us to make sure that the science of COVID-19 is adequately investigated and understood. For anyone who has been following me, I have been looking at the science of COVID-19 primarily from the perspective of autoimmunity. And I think that this is an absolutely critical insight with regards to what needs to be understood. Now, let's start with a few basic things. What really has been happening? Here I have the BBC. This is just one day ago. Andrew Bridgend, MP, expelled by Tories after COVID vaccine comments. And this is the picture of Andrew Bridgen. He's smiling at that point. I'm not sure if he would be when he was expelled. And essentially, they found that after he compared COVID vaccines to the Holocaust and was found to have breached lobbying rules, they then expelled him um, with a 28-day time for him to appeal. And he, however, responded and said, it confirms the culture of corruption, collusion, and cover-ups. So that was Andrew Bridgen's opinion. And the Tory party have made a move where they have said, in effect, he is now probably a risk to their party because he's talking about vaccine harms. Who wants to talk about that at this time? Because apparently the pandemic is over. Why would you listen to things like that? That's where it's important for us to differentiate politics from science. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But let's remind ourselves, because I had done a presentation about Andrew Bridgen before, but I'll remind you quickly as to who he is. This is his home page. He is a member of parliament for Northwest Leicestershire, and he's been there since 2010. So he's been there for over 12, maybe 13 years. And the latest topics he's talking about in parliament on the 17th of April, he called for a referendum on the WHO pandemic treaty. That would definitely get him in the bad books. He was asking the government, questions the government on support for energy efficiency. That's probably more business related. And then he did on the 20th, calls for government statement on a court ruling on a vaccine death related to a doctor. All of these things would not engender him to the party faithful and for those who would like the pandemic question to just go behind us. So it's not surprising that based on these kinds of questions, he was then asked to leave. He was first the party with removed in January and now he has been removed completely from the Conservative Party. He still remains an, an MP, but an independent. So that's the politics of what is happening. Now, for those people who don't think that he should question anything and he should remain silent, I'm not sure if that's necessarily the best thing to do. And the reason is, is because we still have a problem. And when we actually look at um, this was, I'm going to show you a slide from a presentation where I was talking about the, the um, Office of National Statistics data out of the UK. And I put that together in March, and I'm showing you one of the slides that was taken from um, uh, the work of someone um, outside Allen. And it shows here excess mortality. And what we're seeing on this picture here is this is going from 2020, when the pandemic started, and he's looking at non-COVID excess deaths. So not related to COVID, just outside of COVID. There's a band here in April, March. And then, so red means greater than 5%. Dark red means greater than 10%. For anybody who looks basically at this, they will notice that from late 2022 to early 2023, across almost all age groups, this is going red. 
this is pretty serious. And no one seems to have a good explanation as to why this is occurring. As far as everyone seems to be concerned, this is just COVID-19. In the context of science, yes, it could be just COVID-19, but you have to deal with the elephant in the room. I've said this on a number of occasions. Don't assume. Make sure that you have approached this scientifically to ensure that every stone is turned in order to understand what could be happening. Now, that seems as though it's a problem because in the context of many countries who have implemented mandates, if there was a risk, that could come back to be a nightmare for any kind of political decision like that. And that will make people hesitate on it. But my concern is far more significant because the perception is, is that even if the vaccination campaigns have stopped and it looks as though the work that Andrew Bridgen has done must have made an impact because coincidentally, they have stopped the general use of boosters in the UK and it's only limited to the high risk. So something has changed in the thinking of public health. Similarly, in, in Switzerland, they have not recommended the vaccine. So something is happening at different parts of the world. And so him raising these points may seem to be an issue. But as I said, I am focused on the science here. And this is the bit that I've always said. Here is the schematic of what I consider to be autoimmunity in COVID-19. Now, you have to remember that the scientific community generally accepts that autoimmunity is a part of COVID-19, but they don't fully grasp what I'm saying, that the fundamentals of severe disease is an autoimmune response. It's the immune response to the virus and not the virus doing damage to the body. And in that context, we've said, we've published papers on this, it's related to free ACE2 triggering an autoimmune response, which can damage blood vessels inside the lungs and the kidneys and the heart. That's what I've always said from the beginning. That's the science of my focus. Now, the question I've always asked is, is it possible that we could see a similar kind of autoimmune response with regards to spike proteins related to the elephant. I'm still not sure if I can say the word. Now, if that is the case, we need to understand it and we need to understand it quickly. Remember this picture with regards to excess deaths. There is something that is happening that we need to clarify because if the pandemic is over, why are all these people dying of non-COVID deaths? And if you look in the news, you see something new every single day. It's very concerning. What is even more concerning is a bit of data that I have looked at. And let me clarify this. This is me taking the data from the official national statistics and assessing it myself. I am not a statistician. I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm just a clinician. But even within that, I've seen patterns that would concern me. In fact, I've been calling for further assessment since January 2022 because of the Euromomo data on excess deaths, especially in younger people. But there is a flag in there that I think needs to be addressed. And please remember, this is my opinion and therefore one that I would like you to look at, but I can't say what needs to be done with it. But there is a flag in that presentation and the link is below if you want to look at it. In this presentation, what I found was a very strange pattern. In the last six months between June and December 2022, we find that people who had been boosted seem to be protected from non-COVID deaths. Unvaccinated is in purple, but people boost um, who has only had two doses beyond six months seem to have higher risk of non-COVID deaths and one dose is even higher. More critically, we see that these two lines are trending together at this point. What happens if this protection wanes and it goes to meet this line in the future? That's really the critical bit of concern that I have. From a clinical point of view, we need to understand this. Because if there is an inherent risk 
based upon especially my concern about autoimmunity, we need to understand this because without an understanding, we have no opportunity to mitigate. That is my point about what Andrew Bridgend is doing. By raising the questions, he hopefully has triggered the scientific community to do what they should always have done, be objective, look at the data, clarify any questions. There is no follow the science if you haven't done the science. That is our problem at the moment. We haven't done enough science to understand the mechanism of death in vaccinated patients, to understand the patterns of disease that could occur. That may take us years to figure it out, but every day and every week that passes without us looking at this is a further risk to the population. That's a challenge for all of us. Let's appreciate the sacrifice that Andrew Bridgend has done, but let it not go to waste. Let us make sure that his questions that are pushing others who don't want to look at it actually lead us to looking carefully at what could be problems in the future, but more critically, things that could potentially be mitigated if we look at them and deal with them early enough. Have a great evening. Thank you.